kind of like my one month um, testimony really I have a little baby in my tummy <laughs> and it's um, it's really really exciting it's just it's gonna it's just surreal to think I'm gonna be a mom again and I'm gonna be holding a little baby <laughs> hi guys welcome back to my channel so this is going to be a quick little uh, I guess pregnancy introduction video so you guys and it's also pre-recorded so you guys um, are gonna learn and you probably would have learned by now that I am expecting and obviously I chose to keep it um, kind of quiet until you know I've progressed a little further along before I shared it with you guys so with that said I'm here to share uh, I guess basically my pregnancy experience how I discovered I was expecting um, and um, if this video doesn't get too long, I'll also share maybe the symptoms that I've experienced in the first month. Yeah, I think it probably should all get summarized in this video. So I'm just going to get right into that. Um, so anyways, uh, basically you guys saw that I went on a trip with um, Hubby and that was a good time. It was a good time because that time allowed me to relax and <laughs> just allowed for things to occur in, um, in terms of the egg to kind of cook on the inside. Not literally. <laughs> but um yeah so when i was on vacation i was uh, i was probably i was uh what 3 days post all the way up until like 8 days post we were gone for 5 days yeah so we were gone for 5 days and probably about the 6th day 7th day post ovulation i started feeling really bloated and i attempted to put on like i put on my clothes obviously but Everything felt so snug, everything fit really kind of odd, and I felt super bloated. And I kept trying to calculate, like, I'm not at home, so I'm not eating, you know, I do eat a hearty salad and stuff at home, and it does allow me to feel bloated, and I do still eat it because it has so many nourishing things, such as kale and pumpkin seed and cabbage and those things, and it's just really good for me and I still eat it though it makes me feel that way so being that I was away I wasn't eating any of those things I wasn't eating cheese I wasn't drinking milk so I was just thinking it was kind of odd that I felt super bloated also at one day the cleaning lady came in and um, she cleaned the floor and the area in which she cleaned it wasn't even that significant it wasn't a big area it wasn't a large area but she cleaned it and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. And in these hotels, obviously, they have no windows, so you can't open the windows to get any fresh air. And for some reason, this bathroom didn't even have a switch for the fan. I don't know if that's the norm, but it didn't. And with that said, I had to sit there ingesting this chemical forever and ever. And it was so strong. Maybe thinking back now, I probably realized it wasn't that strong, but... It was so strong to my sm my scent or my smell because I guess my smell was heightened at that point. Um, that happened. I had bouts of nausea here and there too. And I just kept thinking, I, I knew I was taking the prenatal vitamins. I was taking the Costco brand, the brand I showed you guys. And it does have the tendency of making you feel sick. I remember the first day we were going on the flight and we were at the airport super early. And when we got there, our bags were over full and I had to switch stuff from one bag to the actual like super large luggage. And I had immediate access to my prenatals. And obviously I was taking those ahead of time too. So I, was, I just decided, I'm like, I'm going to take them real quick since I'm going to be on a flight and I won't have that direct access to them. And just so I don't remember, because I always take them in the morning. And I took it, and I took it, and like 20 seconds later, I felt so sick. I, oh my gosh, luckily we had snacks in that bag too. I could nibble really quickly to get something in my body, and I started feeling a little bit better. But the whole point is, prenatals can make you feel sick, and mine have made me feel sick here and there if I ever take it on an empty stomach, which I know not to now. So... Um, I remember I didn't take it on an empty, empty stomach, but I also didn't eat a lot in the mornings at the hotel and I didn't know why I didn't eat a lot. I felt very peckish and I didn't eat that much throughout the day and I kind of just waited. Yeah, I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't feel like eating a lot and so I didn't. A little TMI here for those of you who are not, um, I don't know, into this kind of stuff, you might want to skip a little ahead until you see that. I'm not talking about this, but another thing is a change in um, discharge that they speak about. And that is uh, obviously um, 
you know, uh, there was a change in like the female bodily fluids. I'm not going to make it sound gruesome, but um, there was that. And if you are ever seriously interested in yourself, you sh I guess you could look it up to see what it looks like um, in the fertile months or the early fertile months, like not months, I would say fertile days. Um, or if you are for not even, I'm not, I'm messing up. You should definitely check it out if you're interested in knowing what it looks like if you are in early pregnancy. So that also happened and that was like a hint because I do, I am a part of a forum. So I was, you know, actively looking and I asked questions and I saw and, and whatnot. So those are the things that kind of gave me a heads up. And, but the bloating was a huge one. I remember trying to suck my tummy in a lot when I was there because I just felt so bloated and I kept feeling like, <laughs> I feel like I look really, um, full in a lot of things that I'm wearing. So, um, I came back home and the very night I came back home, I decided to do a pregnancy test and it was negative. I did a pregnancy test that night, but it was negative, but I didn't really read into it because I'm like, A, you're not supposed to take them late at night. You're supposed to take them with first morning urine. If you drink a lot of liquids, it can dilute a pregnancy test. And I was only nine days post, so I wasn't sure. Um, no. Yes. By the time I came home, I was only eight days post? I think I was eight or nine days post at that. Yeah, I was nine days post at that point. So, um... I nothing, you know, I didn't read into it much. And I all that that was the day we flew on the plane. We drank ginger ale, we drank water, we drank tea, I drank a lot of stuff, so I knew and I I we picked up the kids and chilled at um Aaron's parents for a while, so I knew I drank a lot of the liquids that day. Um anyways, lo and behold, the next morning I woke up, I decided to take the test again, and this time I actually took the clear blue test because we had picked a bunch up at Costco. Um in fact, when we got off the plane on the way home, I had stopped and picked up a bunch at Walmart, but I didn't end up using it because I end I found that I had one of my clear blue left. So I did take that in the morning and it was positive. It showed up in like 20 seconds. By the time the the um, control line was on its way across, well, actually, no, on this one, the control line is in a little box like that. And then it's got the other part. But by the time that one line is going across, it met that line that would create the plus. And it went across and the plus was starting to form before it even fully went across. So I was, I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm, I was super excited. I didn't tell Aaron though because we were getting ready to go to church. And I was just kind of in shock. So we went to church. I had this news. I didn't see anything. Um, we stopped. We looked at houses. I didn't see anything. And when we came on the way back, I kind of told him, I was like, you know, I took a test. And... I explained to him and thus this is a story all on its own because I explained to him too and he he was excited but because I also said I'm not sure and I, I was you know I had the neg it's not a negative spin but because I'm I don't know I guess I was concerned about ectopics and whatnot I was a little reserved and said like but I want to ensure everything is gonna be okay and I was a little panicked about that so when I told him that he it kind of gave him the indication that I wasn't sure that I was pregnant and I, the next day I spoke to him, I was like, what's going on? You're not, are you excited? And he's like, oh yeah, of course. But you said that you weren't sure. And I was like, no babes, I'm, po I'm positive. I have the test right here. <laughs> so that was actually really interesting how it all happened. Um, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. Shortly after that, um, I don't know, we've been progressing so far. I went to go get blood work, which can not blood, yeah, blood work, which officially confirmed my pregnancy. And then they also did, you know, a test to see uh, my HCG levels. And I had to go back two days later to do another blood test to indicate that my HCG levels were rising. Also, oh, this is another thing that I forgot to mention. I'm out of breath a lot, and it's not even late in the pregnancy. I never knew that was a sign, but I found myself being out of breath and and really tired. Uh, but that followed, that came after. Um, anyways, so I did the blood work, and everything was fine. Everything is fine, and I'm basically going to be calling in now to set up my ultrasound to see if I'll be getting it sooner than later. So that is such, that's awesome news, and I'm progressing while I'm over, I'm 
now past a month I'm just well barely past a month I'm now four weeks and one day today so tomorrow will be two days on and yeah that's pretty much it but after I got my BFP big fat positive um, I then like symptoms that came on was just I feel out of breath and I, I was feeling out of breath in Texas too I, when I was recording, I could I heard myself and I was feeling really out of breath, um, and that is a symptom that I'm still having. And then the whole tingly tatas, uh, they get a little tingly and sensitive, and so that's usually a sign. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's exciting news. I wanted to share with you guys basically how um, my month is going, and now that I'm past month one and I'm in month two I'm just super excited I also went ahead and picked up some books um what to expect when you're expecting and what to expect in the first year I picked them up um to be honest I have had I've had those books and I got rid of them because I thought I was done with this stage obviously and here I am again and I feel for some reason it all feels so different it feels very different than when I was 20 when I was 20 or 21 20 you know in my 20s and I had the girls it was I didn't feel as uh, right as I do now and I'm only 32 so I'm feeling it a little bit and but I'm so happy I'm so thankful God is so good and he just oh my gosh just the blessings that I've had I'm just so thankful because there were times when I doubted but I still remain steadfast in holding on to my hope and holding on to the hope that he gives. Uh, I just, it's just hard. It's so hard to fathom that I'm at this point again, like to just think I had tied my tubes and had gone down that road of, you know, gone down that road where I, there are times when I thought, oh, it'd be cool to have another one, but I can't because my tubes are tied. And I was content at those moments. But when I seriously gave it thought and, you know, we were at that point where we were considering other options and it didn't necessarily fall. My heart wasn't all in it the way I thought it would be. Um, and my heart just kept coming back to this point. It's just, it's just hard to fathom like how it all happened, how it all fell into place. And to think I had a, my surgery to repair my tubes and then to think I only have one tube. Uh, it's, it's just, it's so surreal. I, you know, those things, it, they gave, they had me doubting at times. I'm like, I only have one tube. Like, how is that, you know, I'm unsure. How do I know it's going to even happen? And I also had the, just that thought, like, I made such a rash decision. I tied my tubes and I almost feel like, you know, now it's just a price that I'm going to have to pay. And even though I repaired my tubes, it's me doing all these things and, and, who's to say it's going to work out, but God is good. He tells you if, you know, ask and you shall receive and to just remain steadfast. And I have, even in my moments of doubt, those moments of doubt didn't ever take me so far away that it took away my hope. And I'm feeling eternally blessed. I feel so very blessed. And I just want to tell you guys, if you are in my shoe in any way, shape, or form, whether you want to have a child, whether you've been trying, whatever it is, just don't give up hope, trust, even though I know it's hard because I have been there, and, you know, just remain steadfast, because even now I'm expecting, and, you know, the worries don't always disappear, you always have to, there's always something else to kind of question, and it's, oh, it's just a journey in itself, but I'm just so, I'm so thankful. And with God, there's so much hope and so much love and so much, so many blessings to come. So just don't give up. And, um, yeah, that's my, it's kind of like my one month, um, testimony, really. I have a little baby in my tummy <laughs> and it's, um, it's really, really exciting. It's just, it's gonna, it's just surreal to think I'm going to be a mom again and I'm going to be holding a little baby, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's just, yeah, anyways, so you guys, um, I'll definitely take you along for the journey, and let me know down below what you guys would like to see, if you want to see me do, um, different updates, uh, there are some bit topics I definitely want to talk about, um, my concerns about certain things, uh, and I will definitely keep you in the loop, so
So thank you so much for watching and much love. Bye guys.